So there are very straightforward topics and less straightforward topics. One of those uh, straightforward topics um, is performance increase to, and goal attainment, finding one's purpose. Uh, some less straightforward topics are getting unstuck and moving beyond goal attainments towards more meaningful business development and leadership. Coaching, professional coaching can include inspiring higher engagement. It can move to more complex topics around more effective self-leadership to cope with complexity, uh, culturally rich teams and peers. Stakeholder management is a big topic, internationally acting, dynamic environments. And uh, professional coaching can also include um, moving to deal with high-level pressure. Well, it can be either or, both and more. <laughs> this is my standard answer to everything. The thing is that actually it's more difficult to be honest, uh, to deconstruct people when they come in with some preconceived ideas about what they want to work on. But it doesn't mean that people are not welcome to bring a topic. The only thing that you need to do um, is bring readiness to be invested in your own self. Be curious about some self-discovery. Where can you raise awareness about yourself, about what you're doing to become more effective, to and to have more fun in life and to enjoy what you're doing, uh, especially when people are in, in leadership, to become more effective and, and, and have fun along the way. We're working also hard. I, I would also like to add that the most telling coaching conversations happen when people come actually undone. So bringing only their interest in having a genuine conversation about something that matters to them most, but not really having any preconceived ideas. I used to give recommendations when I was a novice, and it was, I think it was more about me feeling safe and prepared for those sessions, uh, while through the experience and the years of working in the field and, and having seen a lot uh, in the field so far, um, it's different in that we start discovering together what may be a good topic, which is saving time, saving energy. It's more effective, efficient. It's more fun. It's it's we we co create start co creating it together. Uh, there is no need to deconstruct uh, the client, and they are more open to to discover what really matters to them. So a uh, good chemistry seemed used to be one of the key factors in uh, in in effectiveness in the effectiveness of coaching, until just recently when we found that it is an important factor, but it's not not the most important factor. It's very important to have a good working alliance, which is about chemistry getting along, but it's it doesn't make the magic anymore because it's just one of the many factors or one of the three key factors that I like saying two of which uh, the other ones are consistency of work. So really having regular conversations, authentic conversations about the topic that somebody's interested in. And the third one is actually readiness. Be really ready to invest oneself because I like saying that coaching is not a picnic in the park. Uh, when we when we come to um, self-discovery, it may, it may be very uncomfortable to do that because there is something that we discover that people might not like to look at. So, of course, good chemistry is important for those moments. But at the same time, but and at the same time, when uh, a coachee or a client finds that there is no good initial chemistry, they should be actually curious about this. Because when there is no chemistry, it doesn't mean that the coach is crap. It, it does tell a lot about an irritation that the client has about the coach, which is information that can be used to for the client to learn about himself or herself. Because the coach is just a symbolic someone, maybe potentially representing somebody else as a person, as a personality in other relationships. So if somebody is not having a good chemistry um, initially with the coach that that's already coaching material that's how I would describe this be very honest and if they really take their time to come and and do this thing to allow themselves to see it as an investment in themselves 
something worthwhile doing for life to not just park it at something this is my about my goal attainment and this is about coming from a to b and i want to achieve this but allowing themselves uh, as themselves to deep dive into seeing it as a holistic development and when we develop in one field in our life like i develop personally that will ripple over to my professional life and vice versa so to see development as something more holistic than just i want to achieve that goal um because then i think that coaching is uh, i should say coaching can do more than this <laughs> I think being busy does not mean being really productive or effective. But the more important question is, how do others around us feel about us and our leadership? What is the impact that we want to make and leave behind for other people? So when we are caught up in this argument, in this, I like calling a limiting belief that I'm busy, I have no time for this. To think beyond this, and like, is this how I want to spend my lifetime? Being busy? And then what? So that's why the more relevant question is like to think about and wonder how, how can I make myself as a leader more relevant just beyond um, being busy? Oh, well, it is out there in literature everywhere because there has been a lot of research done into this to prove that coaching is effective and worth um, an investment. And just recently, I've seen a paper about a 250% ROI in terms of leaders becoming more effective through gaining higher serenity in the face of a world that is brittle, anxious, nonlinear, and incomprehensible, effectiveness in terms of being more powerful, being able to go against the grain, uh, being more credible, which feeds into people's engagement, experiencing real true success, not just in terms of money and cash, but really true success and, and feeling not just I'm a leader, I'm supposed to do something, create something, but hey, who am I in this? What is my own experience of how I'm successful? So all this awareness is helps also engage other people because it's an energy that other people pick up on very fast. And when people experience a leader's positive and engaging energy, they become engaging themselves. Yeah, I, I would like to share actually an example that is maybe parad might seem paradoxical, but it's not. Um, so what I'm seeing with founders uh, and C-suite leadership and, and people who are really charged with a lot is not a lack of goal orientation and result, result orientation, but too much of it, too result oriented, too goal driven. And then of course, as, as a, as a result, losing peers and peers and boards engagement with them through the coaching experience, they start making sense of how to engage upward and downward. So not just to lead downward, but also to see like, what does it take to lead, lead up, upward more senior leadership or uh, peers or, or clients, customers. So this, this element of covering both ends upward and downward leadership, and even lateral one, uh, lateral leadership, as something that is shared, is a shared way of doing it together, rather than I'm the leader and I'm doing something upward, downward, and, and laterally. And through this, discovering real meaningfulness for their position, seeing, seeing that they are more than their roles, and, and learning to detach from goals without risking results and, and their impact. The outcome of coaching is then that they have the serenity or a relaxed, more inspiring and also self-fulfilled leadership style that has a ripple effect on others on all, in all directions. And eventually what they can do is they can just maybe a big luxury today, uh, feel like to be a human being participating in life fully not just being, you know, a productive, a pr production machine for financial results. Without sounding too cynical, quite honestly, we spend so much money on so many things that we don't need in life. So when I, when I hear people say, I don't have money for this, I ask them to wonder about themselves. What if investing in coaching is the thing? 
to have that money? What if people saw coaching as an investment with that 250% ROI? What else would they be willing to not spend money on to afford this investment? There is no black and white, you know, it's we're always making choices in life. So creating consciousness about how am I spending my money and what on? <laughs> what is really useful and what not? And what if investing, making this very investment would get me that money that I don't have right now? Something that I also follow myself as a life motto is always look beyond the obvious. Because the more we can see, the more comprehensive, comprehensively we can, we can tune in with our reality and alter our decision-taking.